Okay, so we're going to do an official and formal audit today of the Boomerang Trading Sessions for August, or yeah, for um, March 20th through April 5th, approximately 14 sessions, two-week audit. I'm going to audit every single trade and show you exactly how Boomerang works and everything. Before we get started, please read the risk disclosure statement and understand about that risk capital is money you can lose without jeopardizing your financial security or lifestyle. You do not want to trade with money that is risk cap, other than risk capital, over and above what you have. I, I often say that traders should be very well off to trade, have a cushion for their account, stay in business. Just like any business, you need some capital to uh, keep your business running if you spend it all on all the various things that businesses require. And in our business, a lot of that capital is spent from losses or things like that. Anyway, just keep in mind what the disclaimer says. Also, that what I'm showing you today is a hypothetical performance because I'm going to show you the exact uh, boomerang setups that did occur over this two-week period. I'm going to go over all of them and explain the simple method, but you should understand that it is. we have to say it's hypothetical, although thousands of traders using our system have probably taken these trades. So with that in mind, first of all, let's go over here and take a look at uh, the disclaimer. Now, I'm doing these audits because Boomerang, as far as I know, is the first and only system in the trading industry that guarantees up to 90% winning trade setups. Now, uh, that's in capital letters here, that is 90% winning trade signals coming from the software following our exact crystal clear system. Now it's very important to understand when you're learning about Boomerang, if you're brand new, that's that's great, welcome. But if you're watching this and you've never seen Boomerang or heard about it, you got to understand we're talking about the software Boomerang through NinjaTrader or we have an e-signal program as well producing 90% winning trade setups on crude oil and NASDAQ. Other contracts I'm hearing from many of our traders around the globe which we have a thousand plus are saying the same thing about other contracts but I'm just for now uh, talking today about the mini NASDAQ one of my favorite contracts for day trading the US stock indexes try to understand here I want you to really understand our guarantee the ultra boomerang day trader software is guaranteed to meet up to 90% winning trades on a sampling of 30 or more sessions on the NASDAQ and crude oil contracts this is based on the software signals and on very exact and specific rules, which I'll explain to you in a minute, which are the guidelines of the trade setups. This guarantee is not based on any individual's ability to trade the software signals and for such individual to be guaranteed to make 90% winning trades. That is absolutely impossible that anybody can guarantee anybody to make winning trades. They may be colorblind. They may have one eye they can't see in. They may be completely... Uh, unintelligent and able to understand simple rules. They may, even upon understanding rules, they may not be understand how to apply the rules because the markets are very, uh, can be very erratic and choppy and fast moving. So we cannot guarantee an individual's ability, but we can guarantee our software. And I go ahead and say it in here, we cannot guarantee any individual's trading skill, experience, emotional strength or weakness, or the ability to follow exact rules under fast market conditions. The guarantee again is based on the ability of the software to generate winning trade signals combined with exact precision rules that are required to be followed to deliver an extreme high degree of winning signals. I couldn't be more clear than that, but you'd be surprised how I get people that just don't get it. You know, they just, everybody wants a guarantee and uh, there are we guarantee our software, but we cannot guarantee an individual's ability to trade the software. That's why I do these audits because we've got a large group of people watching our audit today, and I'm going to go through the exact setups. <clears throat> First of all, let me show you how it works, and I'll explain along the way some modifications that come in. They're very simple. All it is is that we look for a trade signal, which is an arrow here pointing down. This is a cell channel, and you can see that it's shaded. You see the shading? <clears throat> this is a cell channel, and these the this thin line running through here is called the trade signal line. These dots that are yellow and blue on the buy side are pullbacks to the signal line. 
That's where we enter the trades. Now the trade is entered based on the simple rules, which is the dynamic trend bands crossing or matching the same color. You see how the dynamic trend band number one, which is the dashed and dotted line, the thinner one, is crossing under the dynamic trend band number two, which is this thicker solid line. Once they cross or match color in the case here, that sets up a trade signal. So first thing you look for is the channel to open and close. You have a tick measuring here because we're using 450 ticks on Boomerang Mini NASDAQ. And then what we do is when the candle closes and those ticks are all used up, all 450 of them, we watch and see if there is a correct setup on the dynamic trend bands, which did not occur until right here because notice they're not matching color, but we have a crossover on this candle. Now in this particular trade, I'm just going to go slow on the first day to show you all the rules. It's very simple and um, that that um, what I just showed you on the guarantee, the boomerangtrader.com, that's where you can learn all the simple rules. Let me bring that up again real quick. Um, go to boomerangtrader.com and you'll see uh, the simplicity of Boomerang through our, uh, these are recorded uh, webinars and things like that. And you can go through these and learn all our simple uh, rules and method. But I just wanted to show you that again, boomerangtrader.com. So once the dynamic, once a trade channel is open, in this case a sell channel, and the dynamic trend bands have set up correctly, which on this candle is where there's a crossover, it's a crossover or a matching color. Now this is <coughs> starting right off here. This is a modification rule, and that is all of this, the, once you get a channel opening, you count six candles, one, two, three, four, five, six. After the sixth candle, it's not going to print any signal on the pullback signal line. The reason is you don't want to take that trade, anything past six pullbacks of the signal line under a regular setup, but with our modification, if the correct setup has not occurred on the dynamic trend bands, the simple modification rule is that you can trade a pullback to the Cobra. That's this dotted thicker line that's running through the trade channel here. That's called the Cobra. And once the setup occurs, all the signal line pullbacks have been used up. You are permissioned by the system to trade a pullback to the Cobra, which occurred right here. And what we do in our system is we scalp for three points. That's it. Three mini NASDAQ points and automatically place a five point stop. That's done on Ninja Trader's uh, chart trader. I have a little library of those here, but that would be equal to a um, a three point target gain is 16, or that's four points. Uh, it's 12 points, 12 and 20. So you see 12 and 20 here. I can click that and automatically, if I enter a buy or sell, when it's trading live in the markets, it'll put a three point target to exit the trade the brackets will come out here and a 20 point a 20 tick or five point stop automatically so we can see here now again i'm gonna it's gonna be very meticulous and i'm gonna speed up after this first session so i got a lot of work to do here to get all these done and i hope my voice holds up because i do a live trading room every day and the market's always very active and it's a lot of action a lot of emotion but a lot of fun too and um, I'm going to mark every single trade setup, and then we're going to do the total and complete the audit. So if for any reason you um, don't have the next hour free or whatever you have to go, I'm going to record this. It's actually being recorded right now, and you can watch it on your spare time, and you can fast forward to see where it went. Because it's going to be a very, uh, shall I say, tedious <laughs> it's going to take a while to really do this and get the uh, setups on here and show you so let's get started so first of all that modification occurred right here at the cobra so you'd go short at 2150 and 2150 came down to 14 so that's three points in there right that's correct so i'm marking now one slash on the 20th for our first winning trade setup now for example, each contract is worth 20 bucks a point, so every trade that you make a winning trade on is worth $60, and five points is $100. So every trade that you got stopped on, you'd lose uh, $100. Now, 
our 90 percent uh, accurate system you can see that means that generally nine out of ten trades you're going to win now when I get done in about an hour and a half yes it's gonna be a long one I'm gonna add all these up and do the exact totals on what the points would be how many points they got the average of the day and I'm going to show you that it's 90% winning trade signals. Now, I have to say, as a disclaimer, I have never, ever gone through these exact 14 days. I just loaded the charts today. I said, we're going to do an audit. I came in 15, 20 minutes before I opened, uh, before the close here at 1 o'clock or uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I loaded the charts. And I've never looked at them and audited them or anything. So I have no idea what's going to come out of this, just so you know. But I do know Boomerang, and I know how well it works. And there probably will be 90% winning trades, maybe more. So we got one trade there. Now, the second rule is what's called a second-level trade. And that means you get a counter arrow, in this case, a buy arrow, because we're in a sell channel, right? A counter arrow on the buy side that fails. It fails to change the color and the slope of this dynamic trend band number two up here. Sometimes you get a, dot, a blue dot, like here, it, it printed right exactly on the opening of the channel arrow, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to use it, but we do require that to make a second level trade. We require a counter, in this case, buy arrow. Then when the sell arrow comes back in and the market starts moving lower, we immediately take the next pullback to the signal line, and that's winning trade number two there. You see that? So in this run here we just had two winning trades now something very important I'd also like to mention to you and that is we have another rule and this has been around for a while but I just recently did a webinar on the blog in fact you can see it right here how to measure the boomerang trade channels with precision and I did a very comprehensive trade channel or a presentation on our last Wednesday meeting on how to measure trade channel. Now, one thing I said, if you did, uh, it was a little more in depth, but I said if you take nothing away from this webinar today, and that is always wait for two taps on the the Bollinger Band in order to set up the trade. Now, this is the Bollinger Band here. I can tell you it's a standard Ninja Trader default 14 period with a two period standard deviation. That's all we use. That's what these lines are. I love to put the channels in couched in a uh, Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands are proven. They've been they're used by institutions. They've been used for a long time since John Bollinger introduced them back on uh, uh, financial television network before CNBC bought them out. This was way back in the 80s. I know because I advertised some products on with them. They approached me to uh, advertise a, uh, the world's first portable car phone before cellular and uh, they offered that on their channel. Anyway, John Bollinger was one of their very few guests at that time, and his stuff has been proven for a long time. So with that in mind, the second rule here is the second level trades are, are okay. No third level trades or fourth. If there's not going to be a third, there's not going to be a fourth. So just forget about it. If you get two trades out of it, that's good. And the rule with the second level trades is the requirement for a tap on the Bollinger Band is not required because second level trades are so reliable you don't generally need to uh, work the tap on the Bollinger Band. Just a second here, I want to make a quick note of something. Be right there. Okay. always taking notes keep my minds clear so here's a second level trade here we didn't require a tap in the Bollinger Band because second level trades already got that power force going through them especially when the counter buy channel fails there's a lot of sell force on that trade and you can see they hit them to the downside with full conviction here's a counter move but we do not take third level trades so now the market um, just during that period in fact that was the only trade setups we had that day was these two uh, for whatever reason the market just uh, made this probably took most of the day here this one that started at uh, 8 o'clock my time which would be 11 New York did not finish off that channel until uh, 
230. So you can see it was like uh, three hours. This was three hours, so that's the reason. Anyway, you got two trades in there. Nothing coming into the close here. Generally, I'm not going to audit the last half or last 45 minutes to the hour because although there are winning trade setups in there, I generally recommend don't trade in the final hour with Boomerang. You can and it works, but I just, you know, if you had a good day, take the day off. So on the 20th <coughs> of March, we had two winning Boomerang sale uh, trades and no uh, stopouts. <coughs> You with me on that so far? Those are the rules. There's one other modification rule, which is not really a modification. It's called a trend trade. And a trend trade, um, well, we'll get into it when we get to it, and I'll, I'll describe it. Let's do that so we can get going. I'm going to start going a lot faster now because I really want to get through this before the tomorrow morning. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so now what we have here, coming into the opening on the following day, we have a cross under of the boomerang, um, the dynamic trend band number one under number two. However, this is called a mat. These dynamic trend bands are still matching, so it qualifies for a trade. Here's a buy channel, and even though it's crossing under, they're matching colors, so you buy a pullback on this first dot right here, you see how they tap the Bollinger Band here once, twice, pull back to the blue dot at 35 quarter, and 35 quarter ran up to 41. You see that? A six point gain, and it held about a two point stop and a 41. So that's the first winning trade on the 21st there. So now the dynamic trend bands are crossed under. All we're watching to see if we get a sell channel and we can already take we can take the sell immediately. Well, what happened here is we got a sell channel. The colors matched on the DTBs, a pullback to the signal line, and down they go. Second winning trade in a row. Now these four winning trades we have, it's pretty simple, wouldn't you agree? I haven't showed you anything complex if you're an experienced trader. But I'm just saying, we can't guarantee the skill of a person to not be able to follow these simple rules. I think they're simple. Most traders think they're simple. And we have so many successful users of Boomerang, literally hundreds and hundreds across the globe. I don't hear from everybody, but I know that we've sold over 1,500 Boomerangs. So it's a lot of years out. I don't mind telling people that. I mean, it's been, we've been around seven years, very popular system works good one of the only ones that really really works good tells you exactly where to get in exactly where to get out without a bunch of confusing mumbo jumbo which i've seen trust me i've been around the industry a long time i know what they're trying to pitch you out there and it's a lot of mumbo jumbo most of it anyway so here's uh two winning trade signals here again trade signals whether you got in this or not means were you fast enough do you understand the rules was this obvious and clear to you? It should have been. There's nothing mysterious here. Matching dynamic trend bands, a cell channel, taps on the Bollinger Band, and down they go. Anyway, so as they close, now notice here there was not a second level trade here. They just fell off the wagon, and that's going to happen once in a while. However, we finally got a counter buy arrow that failed. Counter sell channel arrow and a pullback to the sig line here and down they go in a huge way so that was the third winning trade there of this day and they just got slow we don't take fourth level trades all this this one was a beauty it just got hammered to the downside this one was also a winner a fourth level trade we just we don't take them you could have taken them if you wanted if you're experienced boomerang user you see the matching dynamic trend bands maybe you're watching the higher time frames or you're watching our high five that you've learned about from my work here in the trading industry and you said oh the high five is just getting killed you know so we're going to go short here anyway but that's up to you but we don't take them as per the system so now we have a cross over of the dynamic trend bend over number two right nothing mysterious about that is there here's a buy channel now here's a buy channel here but usually after big extended move don't focus on the new buy channel because the, you usually want to wait to the second one. And besides, they didn't tap the Bollinger Band. So just forget about it. And the colors aren't matching. 
So you can see there's no way that you could have bought this and thought that it was a buy signal and then emailed me and blamed me because that didn't pan out. You have to have some intelligence to use Boomerang. Not that I get many of those. I get very few. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I mean, it's made a wonderful uh, uh, business for me sell, offering Boomerang and uh, hardly any complaints because most people do trade. And that's why I show I have these webinars and I tell them, you should be experienced. You should have a lot of money. And, uh, you know, once in a while people think they're going to come in with their last $3,000 and then, you know, we don't recommend it, but that's what can you do? You can't tell them what to do. So anyway, we got a buy channel coming in here, two taps in the Bollinger Band, a pullback to the Bollinger Band, I mean to the uh, signal line with the blue dot at 64, 53, 64, and they shoot right up and hand the trader there three points. Now this is an example of a trend trade here. A trend trade is when everything's really sloping up. You get the dynamic trend bed number one crosses over the Cobra. And the next, once it crosses, the next pullback to the Cobra becomes another trade here. And so that would have been at 53.71.50, which ran up for three points to 79. Fifth winning trade in a row. Now again, the trend method is described long ago when I developed this and tested it and did all the work to put it up here and then did the webinar on it. You can see here, let's find it in here so I can show you. I like to show the traders all the proof of what we do with Boomerang because it makes it easier for everyone to see the proof. So many people are out there trying to con you into buying their systems without any proof. And here's uh, here's the Boomerang trend trade method. Now notice today, May 24th, 2016. So um, long ago, last year, I developed the trend method. So when I show you that here, you can see that it's a valid signal for that. So now, as the prices move forward, we get a cross under. I mean, the sell channel comes in, right? But there's no matching color on the dynamic trend bands, and they don't cross over until this candle. So I got a little quiz for you. What is the modification rule on this trade? Anybody know? That's right. All the signal lines pullbacks were used up within the six candles from the opening. One, two, three, four, five, six. Therefore, after the crossover setup occurs, the system permissions you to trade short here at the Cobra, which is right here at 71.50. And there was a little heat on the trade by maybe a point, two points, and then down they come. So that's our sixth winning trade in the row. And on Boomerang, we use 450 tick charts. That's the way the system's designed, and it's the best setup for using Boomerang. It's proven, long time proven system. You don't need to use any other candles or any other method, any Renko bars, any of that stuff. No reason at all to modify the system unless you're making 90% winning trades yourself using something else. You don't need Boomerang then anyway because you're already doing well. But if you're not making 90% winning trades, come and follow the Boomerang method and start doing that. And I think you'll be a lot happier than struggling with all these uh, ways of guessing, what I call guessing at trades. <laughs> You can call it something fancier if you want, but I call it guessing. <laughs> if you don't have an exact proven method that's producing like Boomerang, 90% winning trades, you're just guessing at trades. And uh, good luck to you. It's going to be expensive. Here's a, this trade came down here. Now, what do we have here? Another little quiz for you, and then I'm going to really start speeding up. That's right. We have a second level trade. Why? Because you had the counter arrow that reversed here. You even had two blue dots, but it didn't modify the position or the color of the dynamic trend bed number two. So as soon as you get a counter sell arrow, you trade a pullback to the Cobra, or right here to the signal line, the yellow dot, tells you exactly where to get in. They're alarmed and marked crystal clear on the chart. You get right in there at 61 quarter, and they come right down to 54.50 for three points. So that's so far, we've got seven winning trades on this day. Well, here's a third level setup, and what do we do with third level setups? That's right, we don't take them. You can take it if you want. In hindsight, it looks beautiful, but we just plain, our rule is we don't take them. We wait for the next trade setup. 
So again, you can see everything just keeps repeating the same patterns, basically. What happens here? The market bottoms out. We watch to see what? What's the first thing we're going to do? That's right. We're going to look for a new buy channel on this side, which occurs here. And you, got, you can see the green shading here. And we're going to watch for the next thing we're going to watch for is two taps, one, two, on the Bollinger Band. And then we're going to also watch to see where the correct setup is, which is right in this candle is where they finally crossed over before they match color. So none of these pullbacks are trades. And according to the rule, what's the rule if all the pullbacks of signal line are used up before you get a dynamic trend band set up? That's right. You trade a pullback to the Cobra right here. So the Cobra at 5350 goes up and gives you uh, three points there. So that's our eighth winning trade in a row on this particular session. Well, now the market starts going a little bit wild here and whips on around, and that's typical of day trade markets. So there's, is there a trade here? No, no trade here. And I'm going to start speeding up really soon, so I'm just taking a little time here. No trade here because why? There's no matching dynamic trend bands, and there's certainly no crossover to the downside because this is a sell channel. So there's no crossover until you get over here and the price is or the uh, dynamic trend band crosses under. Now the dynamic trend band has to be the magenta color and it has to cross under or it has to match like here dynamic trend band number one and two. So in this one here they come down and they notice this one two taps on the Bollinger Band and right when they spring back it changed the color of DTBs but then right here they're back to matching the, the magenta color. In fact, both of them are matching. So here and here is your short 5150, and down they come for the um, ninth winning trade on this system. Now, that one was, you know, 20 minutes after the final hour, so we could scratch this one if you want. It's up to you, but it, they sold off in the close. Usually the last 45 minutes or so of trading. I don't like to recommend boomerang trades. Let's start speeding up now because I want to get through this so we can all, uh, we'll have it on a recording. If you, if you can't stay or if it's too fast for you, you can stop and start it once I get the recording up, which will probably be tomorrow. You'll have the weekend. You can look at it. So I'm going to start really speeding up now. I'm serious. Here we go. Now you know all the rules. I've showed you every single rule of boomerang. That's all there is. It's that simple. You have the core trade. You have the second level, and that means the dynamic trend band's matching or crossing. Two taps in the Bollinger Band, pull back the signal line. Or on the modification, you have where the no signals on the signal line comes in after six candles, you wait for a pullback to the Cobra line. The second level trade and the trend trade. That's it. It's that simple. I just told you in two sentences what the boomerang method was. Okay, so coming off the opening here, this is a West Coast chart, so it starts at 6.30. No trades, just straight shot up. They're still shooting up, and they go into whipsaw here off the opening. You got the matching dynamic trend bands right here, but I'm telling you, rule-wise, this is a few minutes after the opening. They're going crazy shooting up, but let's see just mechanically if this pull worked anyway. They're matching color, so you got a buy channel, a pull back to the sig line at 48 quarter, and 48 quarter runs up to 52. So even with all this kind of weird setup and everything, you still had a winning trade there. This is the 22nd, your first winning trade, just following the mechanical rule of the matching dynamic trend band colors. They either have to cross or match colors. So now we're looking for a sell. Here's a cross under, which is a sell signal. As long as we get now, what? tap on the Bollinger Band here and here kind of further down the road but that's okay it's good to have it confirmed you could have taken this pullback on the one tap because it's pretty steep and they're really falling off the wagon but if you waited then you can trade them here but either way you got a three-point gain on that trade this is a second level trade here that failed of course if it fails sometimes they don't fail they keep going in the opposite way but Failed, pull back sig line, three points. Marking these down, we're going to do an entire audit and add them all up later. No third level trade, although it panned out beautifully. A big hyper reversal here. 
no trade here counter um, sell arrow and a counter return to the buy now this still qualifies the first level trade there weren't any setups on it I mean a first level move on the crossover excuse me it's based on the crossover right so you have a crossover no trade signals a f uh, counter sell channel that of course isn't going to be traded on the short side because you have the dynamic trend bands matching and crossed over a new trade here signal coming in the candle closes pull back the sig line at 4875 and they run up to 55 for three points market continues ramping up here now you get across under or across over here a sell pullback or a sell two taps here in the Bollinger Band pull back the sig line and down they go it's nice to use that Bollinger Band confirmation because you, you know you're getting in these markets it's kind of scary money's at risk every bit of confirmation you can get you won't miss the trades in most cases and if anything it'll help you having that confirmation we got reporter I get emails I've had after I did that seminar that I showed you um, this was two weeks ago show you again which talks about this two taps in the Bollinger Band see that was March 22nd two weeks ago I've had all kinds of emails people saying I'm getting 100 percent winning trades I'm going good luck congratulations that's what we want I want you to be happy and make a lot of money then you'll send me some tickets to Maui in Hawaii, right? <laughs> I got some once. It was years ago. I don't know where everybody else is, but that's okay. Uh, not a problem. I don't travel much anymore anyway, so that's okay. You don't have to send them. <laughs> anyway, crossover, new buy channel with a big spike candle. That's okay. Just says they want to buy them more. Crossover here on the dynamic trend bands. Two taps on the Bollinger Band. Pull back signal line here at 57 quarter, and they shoot up for three points sixth winning trade in the row on this day we're getting towards the mid session and then they go crazy as they often do around this time they start whips on no signals here no signals here there's no sell signal here no matching dynamic trend bands no cross under no trade signal all of a sudden they flip back up and they do what and by the way they didn't tap the Bollinger Band here either two taps in the Bollinger Band matching DTBs pull back the sig line at 64 and 64 runs right up to 69 for the seventh winning trade in a row on the 22nd of March and then we close out the session here and I'm gonna really try to get into hyper speed here because I want to get this done so we can total it all up okay here's the opening coming in right here so right off in pre-market they started selling off right after the opening here you had the two taps and the Bollinger Band right exactly on the opening like 10 seconds before the bell they went off and then there was another pullback here so it was a genuine trade and all I'm trying to do today is audit the exact trade signals not saying you would have taken it not saying I would have necessarily taken it probably wouldn't have but I'm just doing an audit today and that's all that matters um, now here you can see notice that this is a very good example notice a very hard whipsaw counter that counter move did upset the sh the slope and the color of the dynamic trend band so that does happen once when it does that it doesn't mean this is a buy signal because this whipsaw it up here and according to our rule you look at the flat bottom of that channel that is a fat channel and especially when you have a flat completely flat dynamic trend band number two and a flat channel there's no trade there but what it did do is reset the market so now we're watching either for a second level up or counter return to the sell side well sure enough we got a sell channel opening they came down here and tapped the Bollinger Band and uh, all this this trade could have been taken here because it was more it was like a modified second level trade or if you waited for the two taps here in the Bollinger Band, you would have just traded the Cobra up here at 58, and they bring them down for three points there on the 23rd, our second winning trade in a row. I'm going to start speeding up now. Once again, a lot of whipsaw in this market on this day and this time. They cross under, but again, come look at the bottom of this rim of this trade channel. Absolutely, utterly flat as a pancake. 
Sure, they went up and tapped the Bollinger Band twice, and the dynamic trend bands are matching, but look at the, the dynamic trend band 1 and 2 are both flat as a pancake with a flat um, channel. That's not a trade. That's one of our rules. You don't trade those. You want sloping. You want and The reason for the Bollinger Band is the upside sloping. This, was, this happened by Whipsaw, and that's fine. Here, same thing. You come down the 1, 2 taps, pull back to the signal line, and down they go. 54 quarter comes down for three points. Now the difference here is notice the sloping, the difference in the slope of the channel on the back here. See if I put my cursor right at the top of this channel, notice how the slope is moving lower as they come down and tap the Bollinger Band. By the time you're here, it's not flat. It's completely sloping. Of course, number one channel sloping and the dynamic trend bands are matching color that's a solid trade there same thing here matching dynamic trend bands a crossover by channel matching dynamic trend bands now there was no Bollinger Band tap here still the system you can trade at the pullback here or just wait for the two taps one two and pull back here it's always good to wait for those to confirm the upside channel that's the power of the Bollinger Bands taps in the Bollinger Bands tend to continue pull back at 59.50 and up they go uh, 23rd, this is the first hour and a half hour of trading into the 23rd. No second level trade setup, nothing on the sell side here. They crossed under, but you got a very flat dynamic trend band up here, and the market's whipsawing after the big up move. No buy channels, nothing to buy here. Everything's flat. Watch for taps and uh, on the Bollinger Band here. One after the channel opens, one, two, pullback signal line with the dynamic trend bands matching and down you go here. Now keep in mind so far these are showing five to eight winning trades a day and you only need two or three trades to make a really excellent trading career. If you make two winning trades a day you can build yourself up to putting on ten contracts and make a tremendous amount of money. If you get real good at using boomerang that's what you can do. Now we might have a stop out here. Here's a strong downside move Here's a counter trade that did not upset the DTB. So this would have been a short here, according to the rules. Um, yeah, I mean, according to the mechanical rules, tap in the Bollinger Band, pull back here at 59. Let's see what happened. 59 runs up to 63, still held the five-point stop, and then came down to 57. So what you would have done with this one, it would have been a you know a scary run up 59 to 63 about a four point jump a green counter green candle and then as they came back down again and this one turned green you would have probably just let it go with a small loss I'll just count this as a stop out although it really isn't I'll count it as one because you could have got wiggled out of this trade and just saw that what was going on with the crossover and everything and you could have cut the loss a little in that or we'll just call it a stop out cross over on the upside pull or um new buy channel taps on the bollinger band pull back to signal line 64 runs up to 68 three points there second level trade isn't this beautiful how boomerang works it's like the same repeating patterns second level trade pull back the signal line and up they go for three points absolutely wonderful and uh, this is coming into the final hour. I'll just show you this trade. Two taps in the signal line, pull back, the, or two taps in the Bollinger Band, pull back the signal line, everything sloping down, and down they go. Uh, that's the very beginning of the final hour. There's a second level trade coming into the final half an hour, but we won't count that. But that was a classic second level trade right here tapping the Bollinger Band. Although it's not required for the second level trades, you want to see them go down here and it always helps if they tap the Bollinger Band. And nothing into here. Let's move to the next day. This should be, let me double check, this should be the 24th. I'm in sync here on my notes. Opening here with a buy channel. Nothing to do because we don't have the my dynamic trend bands matching until here which occurred two minutes before the opening. And then they took off like a rocket ship, so nothing to do there unless you were one of these uh, Rambo gunslinger traders and uh, <laughs> you decided to take that. However, look at this, though. Here's a trend channel. 
everything's sloping up. The dynamic trend band number one crosses the Cobra. And with usually you're looking for within three to four candles for that to pull back to the Cobra right there. That's your buy right there at 80 quarter. Remember I talked to you about this at the beginning of the webinar there. And that's for the 24th. That's our first was a uh, trend trade. And I showed you where that was listed about a year ago. Uh, a little less than a year ago on the blog how to do the trend trade channels trend trade uh, setups here's a uh, sell channel opening up a tap here in the Bollinger Band and a tap here the trade setups occurring right here on the crossover so if you didn't take this one here let's see where that went 87 came down to the 84 would have eked out three points if you waited for the exact crossover here and a second tap in the Bollinger Band, then you would have got short here at 86. Now this got whipsawed a little. 86 ran up to 90, still held the five-point stop, and then 86 came down exactly to 83. See that? See my cursor on the right? 86 quarter was the exact entry, and the low right here, 83. 83 quarters so it eked out three points just barely but we're just mechanically recording the setups see what happened now here they shot up nothing happening here until we got the two taps in the moment nothing happening here until the dynamic trend bands match there's your pullback there to the signal line with the DTBs matching 90 50 goes up to 95 for three points it's all winning trade, 90% winning, higher than 90% so far, much higher, almost 100%. We had one that we recorded as a stop out, which really could have been wiggled out of for maybe a two, three point loss. Uh, flat dynamic trend band action here as the market starts whipsawing. Nothing to do here, flat channels on both sides. See the, the channel, how flat, they, all you got to do is put your cursor up there, you can see it. Then we come down here, and no taps on the Bollinger Band here, maybe, but again, it's not a sell because of the flat. Actually, the channel's kind of sloping up a little. These are not the ones you want to take. You get real good at learning this, and we train you how to do this like we're doing on this audit here. Pull back the sig line. Two taps, or two taps on the Bollinger Band. Pull back to the sig line. This is a fat channel because of these hard whipsaw candles down here. Our traders know that this is a huge fat channel don't want to trade this signal here although it, it didn't get stopped out and it panned out beautiful ideally you want to do what I call getting a discount and that is try to trade them up towards the Cobra and then you get a better entry there but it would have worked out anyway uh, so no problem there mechanically if you took that one uh, you would have had experienced a little heat but you would have been alright you would have made it and then here uh, they start whips on up again and nothing is matching until we get to this candle you see that arguably here but all the pullback sig line have been used up arguably here but they technically I don't think these colors were they were blinking on between these two candles so you wouldn't have had a trade here you just left it alone nothing to do there here's a new cell channel opening up two taps here on the signal line all are on the Bollinger Band all the pullbacks are used up here so this rule as you should know matching dynamic trend bands two taps in the Bollinger Band all the signal line pullbacks are used up so that permissions you to do what that's right go short at the Cobra right here at 8375 and down they come for another winning trade there Again, if you're not making 90% winning trades, consider purchasing Boomerang. It's only $100 a month. It's practically free. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you pay it up front. It's $11.95, but that breaks down to $100 for a year, and then you own it for life. And I just showed you how every day five trades is going to make you um, $300 per contract. If you got four contracts on, you're making $1,200. You actually pay for Boomerang in one day. You can easily do that with four contracts on the examples I'm showing you here. Nothing happened here. It just fell off the wagon. Now they're crossing over. Buy channel. Two taps in the Bollinger Band. Pull back to SIG line right here. And up they go for three points. Boomerang is not expensive. We're actually one of the lowest cost systems 
in the industry and the only one ever in the history of the industry that guarantees 90% winning trade signals setups and you're seeing them all right now I'm doing an audit that's why I do these audits two taps that's qualifying it but we don't have anything till we cross over here and that's not a signal way down there what you'd want to do is try to get a better price on a little bit of a bounce back to the Cobra here Cobra bounced back at 72 they ran up to 77 they just barely eked out well let's see here if you traded the Cobra here it looks like exactly five we'll just call it a stop out there no big deal they start whips on the upside technically this was a very strange when you get a big giant run up like this and you got a flat dynamic trend band number two you got the crossover this is not a trade signal you could have traded the Cobra maybe you would have survived if you traded up to the dynamic trend band here but at that point they had a counter buy channel so there's no trade there what that did do and plus by the way oh my mistake actually I'll erase that one as that stop up because that's quarter that's be 15 minutes for the market close so I'm actually gonna ex erase that stop out because this is 15 minutes for the close we don't trade that I've already mentioned three times we don't trade in the final hours so I did accidentally record that because I'm going so fast here um, and again you can rewatch the tape and slow it down and learn all about boomerang I'll have this up on the blog tomorrow at boomerangtrader.com here's a big swoosh to the downside off the opening and a big whipsaw up that changes the dynamic trend band so all this move did didn't create any buy trade look the actual trade buy channel is sloping downward there's no trade there it's the not even flat as a disqualifier it's sloping downwards so just forget about it you're waiting here now you got the dynamic trend bends matching on a second level down move here pull back to the signal line at 2375 comes down to 1975 so that's your first winning trade there now you're watching for the next move here buy channel coming in waiting for the dynamic trend bands to match across crossover with two taps here on the signal line or the uh, Bollinger Band I keep calling it Sig Line but it's a Bollinger Band pull back the Sig Line here 27 quarter and up they go second winning trade in a row on the 27th I got a long way to go so I better hurry trend trade ch here you see that dynamic trend band in one cross the Cobra within four, say like four to maybe five candles you trade the first pull back to the Cobra right here at 35 and 35 runs up to 45 huge move there all you need is a boomerang system you don't need to modify it or guess or add all your past uh, things into it that have not apparently su helped you succeed at trading so why even just forget about all the stuff you learned in the past try to unlearn it we try to help traders unlearn losing trading and just get into the habit of making winning trades now what you got here again is not only not a flat dynamic trend band number two but see that when I put my cursor here it's actually sloping up now here it flattens out but one of our rules is to not trade a flat dynamic trend band number two you want to slope in that direction and look at the trade channel same thing and again I went into elaborate detail how to measure the boomerang trade channels with precision this was last week's webinar that's flat don't take a short there wait and see what happens probably get a reversal buy reversal matching dynamic trend bands pull back the signal line and up they go this is the um, we're still on the 27th here I believe let me just quickly check just to make sure yep 27th <coughs> so this was that was this trade here that was trade number four winning trade counter move that fails to move the dynamic trend band and we've seen a few that have moved it so you know what I'm talking about and then the minute you get that new buy channel get ready to grab the next pullback the sig line of course as soon as you're making sure the dynamic trend bands are matching color which they are here at 70 half 70 half goes down to six seven quarter a little heat there that's okay you can take it you're a trader you got nerves of steel right 70 quarter runs up for three points on that deal 
mechanical system very simple to use nothing to do here's a cell channel here's two taps in the Bollinger Band and right here they're crossing over exactly on this pullback here 7675 comes down for three points that's why we do these audits I like everybody to see exactly what's going on with boomerang and how well it works these are not nothing here I can do to fudge the rules they're very they're written in stone and uh, that's it you know I'm showing you the audit. This is coming into the final hour, so we'll just skip this one, although it was a winning trade. And this is a winning trade, but that we're not trading these are late in the last hour. Let's go to the next day here. This is the 28th. Here's the market coming down into the opening right here, and it shoots up. These are usually off the opening a little bit tricky because the market is you know what they call the amateur hour the first well amateur 20 minutes <laughs> first 20 used to be the amateur hour first 20 minutes all the amateurs got to have a position because they can't stand to see the market open and not have a position on it. and they all lose mostly and they get all stopped out and who knows why but you see it every day if you watch the volume off the opening build a volume meter you can go to my blog here and see how to build a volume meter you'll see it happening off the open that's where all the big volume is <laughs> Who is that? Yeah, it's some professionals squaring positions up, but it's mostly people that can't stand to have the market open and not have a position. It's kind of sad, but anyway, first trade, two taps in the Bollinger Band, pullback signal line, down they come on the 28th. We're moving ahead. We're about halfway through. It's a lot of work here. Matching. Okay, so here's a counter buy channel opening up nothing here on the dynamic trend bands arguably they match color here but odds are that because of that spike that thing took off you wouldn't have got in so nothing to do there here again um, two taps in the Bollinger Band they fell off the wagon nothing to do here with a big fat channel as the market just got whipsawed up and crunched down so two big fat channels what we call fat channels with uh, no condition for a trade here maybe you got this one if you saw them all matching but it, it, it probably not this was all moving very quickly I'm sure so you just wait for your next boomerang trade here on the 28th first hour is over here's a buy channel coming in here we're waiting for two taps in the Bollinger Band now the dynamic trend bands are matching so you go long here at 76 quarter and uh, you know it's got a little hairy no doubt 76 quarter made a pullback but did not hit the five point stop it would have been scary I know but then they finally wiggled their way out of it and moved higher for three points on a mechanical basis which is how you trade boomerang no second level trade set up here and a huge whopper upside third trade no sell here no taps in the Bollinger Band uh, flat dynamic trend band actually sloping up this is a third well because no second level set up you could arguably say this was a second level I'll leave that up to you but um, it's a big move cross under the dynamic trend bands so the first there are two taps in the sig the Bollinger Band here. Pull back the signal line and down they go for three points. The market uh, forming, yeah, forming a trend trade here as they scoot under the, the Cobra. Flap back to the Cobra. Oh, oh, I see what happened. I was going, how did I get through that session so quick? This all took hours, this big up move. I remember this day. It's a huge up move. So this trade's okay, just barely in that last hour, but the rest, the um, trend trade is not good because it's too late in the session. Let's go over the next day. So only um, four trades on the 28th. Here's the opening here. Big choppy opening coming in. Nobody's hitting the Bollinger Band arguably here matching dynamic trend bands first trade after the open with matching DTBs but no Bollinger taps which I'm using as a qualifier for this audit here nothing here to do second level trade 
jumping up. You don't need a Bollinger Band tap on the second level trades. Here's the top of a fat channel, which everybody knows this rule in our room. I didn't mention earlier, but I mentioned along the way here. When, the, when you get three or four spike candles, it forms what I call a fat channel. If you turn your head to the left, you can see the big belly here. We don't trade at the top of that. And what ended up happening from that spike, it created a trend trade move. See that? Dynamic trend band number one goes over the Cobra, pull back the sig line, and shoots up for three points. So that's a good deal here. <laughs> um, so use the proven boomerang method and you'll be making steady winning trades as you can see here. If you're trading with another method and guessing it with a bunch of things you've learned off the internet or uh, looking at indicators and stuff, trade a proven system that's been around for seven years that's very low cost and you'll be much happier. You'll go into work every day and feel a lot more comfortable knowing that you know exactly what to do. Here's two taps on the Bollinger Band. Here's the crossover. So you either took this trade here or this one here. And either way, they uh, knock them down for three points on the 29th. We're sailing right through this, which is great. I want to keep everything timed right. No crossover, no matching dynamic trend bands here, no buy signals here at all. I hope you can see that. I've explained the rules here, so you should be able to understand. you got to have a crossover or a cross under, meaning depending on the channel. There's a buy channel, a crossover, matching dynamic trend bands here. Um, they had already on the first level up tapped the Bollinger Band, but if you wanted to wait for a qualifier, you would have had that here, but you would have had to wait for the trend trade here, which you see that when it crosses the, the dynamic uh, the Cobra here and pulls back to the Cobra. That's your first trade if you waited for the trend trade. If you grab this one off the opening, assuming this is a level one trade, this is a, a counter move that fails. You don't need the dyna you don't need the Bollinger Band tap to confirm it. Either way, you might have had one trade here and a, definitely a second trade here on the trend trade method. And again, the whole. Um, day got taken up just on these big giant up moves really long stretches that cause the market to just grind higher i remember these are very hard to trade because they're not trading they're just grinding higher what do you do you just sit there and you know with boomerang there's not going to be any trade setups so now you go in here and you look at uh the opening here Coming into the opening, all mixed up here because you got the dynamic trend bands coming down. It's off the opening, and you've already had a kind of whipsaw sell off. Just leave it alone, wait for the next crystal clear boomerang signal, which occurs right here. Buy channel opens up, but we don't have any taps on the signal line on this one. So it's up to you. The, the regular method would be to buy the pullback here to the signal line, but I'm really trying to do this audit based on the taps on the Bollinger Band, which has been doing really well for conferring trades. Every trade we've had so far, Signal has done that, so this one didn't. And uh, if you took, if you waited for the tap like here and pulled that one, that's not really a good trade. It's not the correct trade setup. And when you're here live in the markets, you're not going to probably want to buy this. It's a little too nerve wracking So just skip this. Uh, we'll, we'll not use that. Uh, no disturbance here, so a second level trade coming up does not require the tap on the Bollinger Band. Here's a buy channel, matching dynamic trend bands, pull back the SIG line, 43.75, gets whipsawed a little bit, and then jumps up to 47.75. So this, um, again, let me just double check, I believe this is the 30th. Yeah, this is 30th. Second level trade, then here crossing under, a sell channel, two taps on the Bollinger Band here, and a pullback the SIG line here, 43, got jumped up a little bit here, and came down. The second winning trade on that day, again, trading, just showing the audited trades of the mini NASDAQ for the last two weeks trading with boomerang day trader here's the crossover with matching dynamic trend bands pullback sig line after two taps and uh, up they go 
39. Isn't that Bollinger Band's beautiful? Because once they tap that Bollinger Band once is good, but I always use twice. It's pretty amazing um, how you get a uh, really good confirmation. So I recommend you use that. It's really valuable. Valuable tool. And again, one of these days where they just uh, was kind of a you know some flurry of activity here but then they just slowly ground lower and that took about an hour and 20 minutes and then they finally turned around now you're getting all choppy full of whips on in the final hour so we won't mark that let's go to the next day here which will be the 31st yep my notes all sync out here uh opening nothing here it's a counter it sell so we're watching for a second level buy trade does not require the Bollinger Band tap although they did tap them here pull back the sig line and up they go on the 31st for our first winning trade it's been a little bit slower because of the choppiness lately I think the Fed's kind of helping the Trump train although today it got going but I've been telling traders we're in a sell rallies mode still and look what happened today Dow closed down 41 after being up 180 so <laughs> so there you go I mean there's the proof right there but I do this nightly work on my I've been doing for 17 years in the public eye 18 proprietary indicators used to call the short-term direction means the next day one or two or three days out but that's just something I do in my trading room as a kind of a bonus so we had uh, second level trade here this is technically would be a third level trade so we would wouldn't take this one here's another choppy fourth level trade so kind of this whole fiasco here and we've been seeing this sometimes lately and this is what I mean about in my view this is a proof here this isn't like really bullish although the market kept going up it's just the Fed kept propping up the dips these little micro very hard to trade if you're short-term scalping not on boomerang because that's mechanical but and here there would be no trade after this second level trade but I go in and scalp these things and uh, micro scalp them and they dip them down two ticks and then ramp them up it's very difficult dip them down ramp them up anyway here they just collapsed I wouldn't take that trade but mechanically you could say it's a boomerang trade but you know they just fell off the wagon so hard pull back I remember this day I remember this trade and I said I don't know about that one and it sure enough it produced three points but we'll just skip that one and the whole day went by with only one trade on the 31st coming into the end of the month which is usually a little more bullish but it looked like they were trying to get some help from their friends the riggers there on that day and this is let's double check it again uh, the third yep April 3rd we're almost done here almost done today's the fifth opening this April 3rd right here is the opening it's all choppy and then we get a uh, buy signal it taps the Bollinger Band pull back the signal line and it's just a confidence builder when you buy that watch for those two taps in the Bollinger Band the market is basically doing something that's proven when it taps the Bollinger Band and that is it tends to draw the prices in that direction so if you're using a boomerang trade and using that method making sure the channel is not flat like here and looking kind of strange which wouldn't have been a trade anyway because they didn't have the crossover but I'm saying these kind of flat channels if they're occurring be careful with those wait for the confirmation doesn't apply to this setup and I'll go over that in a minute so first trade said let's go into that one now see as you know we're waiting for a crossover in this case cross under if it's a sell channel here's a sell channel all the pullbacks are used up to the signal line before there's a genuine trade which would have been a cross under so we'd trade the Cobra well you know it's part of trading they just fell right off the wagon and there was nothing to do there wagon kept rolling along and <laughs> the price just fell off and big drop there nothing here now look here though this is interesting because this is a counter level move but the rule is that it does not disrupt the slope in general of the dynamic trend number two or the color maybe in this at one point it blinked 
to the blue color but in general it has to close and it you can see it's still the magenta color is there so this is actually a second level trade here sell pullback sig line a little bit of whips on the entry 39 ran 4175 but then down they came on April 3rd two days ago and we've got a trend trade coming in here see that this candle got has a cross under where the dynamic trend number one crosses the Cobra and you I like to say well, four to five candles much beyond five you're getting too far away but one two three four five and the fifth candle did go up and tap the Cobra and down they came so that's a winning trade there on a strictly on a mechanical trading the exact method basis if someone buys boomerang and says I didn't get all winning trade signals I go or I didn't get all winning trades I get that one so I go it's not up it's not what you, whether you made winning trades and I don't know you're probably doing it wrong but it's the trade signals that we're warranting guaranteeing that boomerang will produce 90 percent trade signals and that's what we have so far we have much more than that on this audit and that's why I do these we can't guarantee that you're not going to get all shaken out by the markets and do something wrong or or get a weird entry or something I mean you know it doesn't matter the whole idea is nobody's ever guaranteed a software to produce 90 percent winning trades if you can just get half of that you'll do incredibly well it's not a question of you got 90 percent winning trade that's not that's madness if the software produces 90 percent trades and you pick out two or three of those a day you're going to do very very well so I hope you understand it's very important and those of you who are boomerang use I know it's you already know what's going on but I'm just trying to give you an idea here so this was a uh, trend trade on the downside and then here crossing over again by channel which is actually sloping down and there's no crossover either anyway here's the, the crossover actually occurred on this candle so you're permissioned in here to come in here and pull according to the system when I say permission I mean it's very militant if you're in the if you're in the military and your drill sergeant says do something you better do it if you do something and he didn't permission it you could be a lot you could be peeling potatoes until your hands fall off you know you better be careful so similarly to win a trading you got to become very disciplined so we have a system that's like our drill sergeant known as boomerang and when boomerang method says to trade you trade when it says not to trade you don't trade if you don't like that and you're trading on your the seat of your pants and losing money and maybe you've blown out one or two accounts well at what point do you finally say geez I'm getting sick of losing I want to trade a winning system and you buy boomerang that's a pretty good idea huh now technically there were no taps on the Bollinger Band here they didn't they got really close on two taps so theoretically let's say we bought the Cobra here at 2275 2275 or 23 ran up to 26 so there was a three points got eked out in here it's genuine not a problem but whether you maybe got that or not maybe you got a tick worse maybe you got a tick better on the the Cobra here and, and ramped it up it just depends but we can't guarantee your actions in the market but we can guarantee our software the example I often gives like a car when you buy a brand new car do they guarantee the car is going to work of course they do they give you a warranty for a hundred thousand miles or whatever if you if you negotiate with them they're going to guarantee that every single component of that car works exactly as advertised and stated right do they guarantee that you're not going to get a ticket do they guarantee you're not going to that you're not going to get an accident it's exactly the same but some people you know and those people don't buy boomerang anyway because they don't really belong in the trading industry but I bring it up only because that's why I do these audits to help people understand if you buy a new car they're going to guarantee that it works like it was advertised on TV which drew you into the lot and the salesman did his thing and got you into the car they're going to guarantee that's going to work even if it's a used car or they'll fix it but they can't guarantee if you come in and say hey well I bought this new car from you but hey man I got in an accident 
so I mean <laughs> I want my money back right <laughs> give me a new car no you got in an accident why well I was drinking that night and uh, you know whoops I hit the curb and then the car flipped right you see what I'm saying it's pretty clear when I give that example but you'd be surprised I don't get many one out of every few hundred people I email with they just like to argue because they've lost a lot of money trading and they don't want to be disciplined so they have to try to argue why being disciplined and following a proven system somehow won't work or something you see what I mean anyway I rarely get that but I'm talk about it because we're doing this audit just to let people really see what's going on so nothing here until two taps in the Bollinger Band here one two here's a pullback but we still don't have the matching DTB so you probably right here you got short you were able to get short and if that didn't happen you can always trade a pullback to the Cobra because all the uh, pullbacks got used up before you actually saw these genuinely printing the color you see this is an example here again where trader skill experience the signals are coming in right here this was blinking magenta at the time you may not have taken it because of that if this didn't go back to the Cobra and you didn't get in you can't email me and complain that hey your software said this but I wasn't able to get in well again that doesn't happen much that I get emails like that but I'm just trying to give you an example of how I can't guarantee your skill what if you were up getting a cup of coffee or petting your dog for a second and then you look up and this happened and you didn't get in that's not boomerang's fault that's not Mohan's fault that's <laughs> it's called get a clue anyway here's a pullback to the Cobra you can take that one there fifth winning trade on the third so the third's lighting up with more signals hey uh, don't ask me why I tell our traders all the time that um, every day is different in the markets absolute patterns repeat as we're seeing here but every day is different in the markets without fail every day something different news some little something today you had the Fed involved in the market and it was all acting really weird and herky-jerky and look at the, the the shift from being up 180 to down 40 Wow but right off the opening when we opened the room I said uh, over at Mo daytradersaction.com that's my room uh, I said we're still in sell rallies mode I know they're blowing the thing up to the moon they're making a new high in the NAS we're still in sell rallies mode and we are we're actually holding the market short with a uh, symbol TZA which is a triple short on the underlying um, small cap stocks which are be experience a lot more weakness than the rest of the market so got a nice gain on that today of 3.32 uh, percent anyway moving on here matching color occurred on this pullback signal line and there is no taps in the Bollinger Band so you could have taken it or not we won't record that because I'm trying to do this audit based on them tapping the Bollinger Band you hate to miss the trade but it's nice to have a confirmation such as the Bollinger Band taps like you see here nothing here um, nothing crossed over everything got whipsaw as soon as the crossover came in on a flat to slightly upsloping dynamic trend band number two here's a buy channel opening matching dynamic trend bands after two taps on the uh, Cobra I'm, I'm sorry the uh, Bollinger Band pull back the sig line and up they go so if, um, fifth winning trade on the third coming into the close so not, okay now we're gonna go to the fourth let me double check yeah this is the fourth this was yesterday's action on the mini Nasdaq here's the opening of the market I'm doing them from the opening to the final up to the final hour that's what the audit is two taps on the Bollinger Band on a crossover one tap here one tap here one tap here so you might have said well I'm gonna say this got all used up you're still fine get your two taps they cross over you can still trade that pullback to the Cobra right here and up they go 
Now there was a um, a trend trade here, but no pullback to the Cobra, so no second trade there. You see that? These set up, but they don't always pull back to the Cobra. You got to have them cross over. Then within five, four to five candles, you have to kind of judge it while you're watching. But usually four to five candles max. They should pull back to the Cobra if they're going to. Then you can get long. So. This trade was a pullback to Cobra with all the signal lines used up. Up they go on the 4th. This was yesterday's action. And then we're going to complete the audit by adding everything up. I'll give you the totals and everything. So here we go. Rolling back lower with a sell channel. No taps in the Bollinger Band until here. And no crossover or color match till here. So. The two taps in the Bollinger Band here were beautiful, but they they don't trade at the signal line. You'd have to trade at the Cobra to follow the rules on this, and they never made it up there. Now we're not we're talking about that happening very quickly after the signal after the occurrence of the crossover, three to four candles, not way down here. That's not a that's not a correct setup. So. No trade there. By channel tapping the the Bollinger bands. Nothing matching till you get way up here. So just another uh, kind of the market acted really weird here. It's kind of a dud. No trade there on Boomerang. Matching dynamic trend bands here and here. You might have taken this one at 22.50. Well, no, no. Again, we're we're strictly sticking to the confirmation of the Bollinger Band tap. No Bollinger Band tap. Just forget it. Didn't happen. That's okay. They're just wait for them. Then you get a. It's better to have five trades and have losers than have three trades that are all winners. See what I mean? Now they're kicking up. Tap in the Bollinger Band, pull back signal line. See how much easier it is when they tap the Bollinger Band. It just puts that that power juice on your side, that energy juice on that buy side there when they tap the Bollinger Band. It's much worth it to wait for that. I love this new filter. It's been around. I've been talking about this for since the start of Boomerang back seven years ago, but lately I've kind of revamped it and added that webinar again, which you can watch for details on a lot of different ways of measuring the trade channels not required to do that for boomerang but all I'm saying on a minimum is look for the two taps in the, the Cobra or the Bollinger Band and make sure the channel is not flat like this on always use the second outside rim not the, the first rim of the channel is always going to slope that way that's a very fast line. These are based on moving averages. But if they're slow, like this one's really flat and the Cobra or Dynamic Trend Band number two is flat, just forget about it. It's not it's not a correct trade. Here's the cross under. Here's a buy channel. Here's a sell channel. Everything's matching now, so you can trade this pullback the signal line because it is a second level trade. Even though this didn't pan out, it's still a second level downside move. It's under the dynamic trend bit number two and it was a downside move. So here's your entry at 28 and 28 came down to 23.75. So that's again a little light on trades the last couple days. Three, third trade. I think today was a little better um, that I recall. Dynamic trend by channel all the pullbacks getting used up nothing matching until you get here and no taps in the Bollinger Band all the way up so it's kind of a weak move although the center of this was around 3150 and they went up to 39 I know it was a big move but it, it again it's these riggers kind of just jamming the market up but it didn't really have a lot of substance here just kind of a herky jerk kind of upside move that eventually panned out but the Bollinger Band gives a trade a lot of substance you know but it was a first level move. Here's a counter second level move, which didn't upset the color of the dynamic trend band number two, but we're in the final hour. So arguably, this is definitely a, a solid boomerang trade here, but into the last hour, so we're not going to count it. 
And let's go to days, and then we'll we'll button up with all the totals here. Quite exciting. I was able to get this done a little quicker today, which is great. So hang on. We're almost done here. One more day. Okay, opening. Pre-market opening. They're just sliding them up today. Big, big ramp up above the all-time high on the NASDAQ. Weird market. Weird market coming in here nothing to do here we do have a trend trade though look at that cross over of the cobra by the dynamic trend number one right when they cross on this candle and this candle you got to pull back to the cobra you just jump in close your eyes and buy i know it's a nervous business always will be it's not going to go away 46 runs up to 50 75 for the first winning trade trend trade the proven method, I didn't introduce that last year until I had, I went over like 50, 60 charts that I recall. One of my famous lost weekends. They're not famous to me, not famous to my wife, that's for sure. <laughs> Aren't we going to go do something? Yeah, I got to go look at these charts, you know. That's okay. I got a mission, you know. And uh, it out came the trend trade, and that's what you're seeing right before your eyes, producing, adding usually two to three extra trades a day to your boomerang arsenal that's enough to pay the mortgage after a month of three extra trades a month that pan out with a high 90 percent proven rate that's a good deal big whopping first level trade second level trade or counter trade this is actually the second level here 62 ran up to 67 second trade of the day a lot of these second level trades here um, see here's a crossover but too many candles you got to have them within four or five candles to pull they should normally when there's a crossover for a trend trade you usually want to see them uh, uh, pull right back now this actually had already this was carried over from the first trend trade move where was that here you can see that it actually so this really wasn't one it really just they were merging back together but it already crossed over so here's the crossover point here on this candle the dynamic trend bands don't match until that point we had uh, cell channel two taps on the signal line but then that's it they just fell off what can you do nothing you can do here's a buy channel no taps in the Bollinger Band see how that sets up a much clearer uh, trade direction like here they're kind of floundering but as soon as they get in touch with the Bollinger Band it tends to lift those prices in that direction on either side all the trade signal lines are used up two Bollinger taps so you trade this is a combination kind of trade here where we were waiting for a after the confirmed signal which occurred on this candle two three four five six seven actually there was too much had trend you, you can maybe go up to five candles maybe six to catch the cobra but here it ended up happening on a sort of a trend trade here at 76.50 but lucky that happened when it did because that was the end of the move scary but mechanically it did work out as a correct trade and you just put them on you put on your plus 12, minus 20, just let it work. Try to watch it a little to make sure it's still within the system. Two taps in the Bollinger Band. Crossover occurs here. And prices are sunk way down. This is one of those deals where you try to get the Cobra because they, you know, look at this Whopper, 79 down to 70, you know, eight point candle. Hello, be careful. I know it's tapping and you got a channel that's sloping and the crossover matching color. But just try to get a discount. I mean, go to the Cobra up here and short them at 75.50 and then you got you got the results you want. On some of these trades, you got to do that. Second level trade. Yeah, there's the arrow and there's the pullback signal. Line. So counter move, second level trade clear as a bell and you don't need the Bollinger taps on the second level trades doesn't hurt but you don't require them for those 
So that's the fifth winning trade in a row today. And then they just, remember they got crunch this morning. Big crunch. This is a uh, third level trade here. And they just took off. Counter move, no taps in the Bollinger Band. Notice that, how it kept you out of uh, trade here. Now, arguably, you could say crossover, pullback, 24, ran up to 30. I know it panned out, but it kept you out of a possibly more dangerous trade. That one did work out. And a lot of times after the end of a huge whopper move like that, that first one can really whipsaw. And you see a literally a flat to sloping down channel. No taps in the Bollinger Band. You're better off staying out, even though this did pan out. It was a uh, hard-earned trade. That, if that spike hadn't occurred, say you take this candle, these two, and you shrink them down to the level of this one, that trade would have, let's see, 23. Yeah, it would have still probably panned out. But anyway, you see my point. And then that was it. And besides, oh, and besides, that one was into the last, uh, that was 20 minutes for the close. So this was the big sell-off we were talking about with that Dow. Look at that. What a mess. They go and pop out a new high today in the morning. All this hype. Riggers. They're just riggers. And then knowing that they're going to blast the market lower. We were in uh, short ETFs, triple short ETFs on the TZA. So I didn't have, I could just go and take a nap and if they sell off, we'll make money. But as far as trading it, I wasn't here when this was happening today. So, big blast to the downside. And that's it. So, with that in mind, let me run the totals here. Okay, on the 20th, um, two winning trade setups, no stopouts. There was nine on the 21st. There was seven on the 22nd. There was five, six, seven on the... 23rd and one stop out. There was six on the 24th. There was six boomerang setups on the 27th. There was five on the 28th. I'm just going back over everything we just did. Two on the 29th. Three on the 30th. One on the 31st. Very quiet day at the end of the month, which is rare. Usually at the end of the month, a little bit of bullish fireworks. Five on April 3rd. 3 on April 4th, and 5 today. So each, now what I'm going to do the money, well, first of all, I can tell you right now, let's do this first. Not, okay. Well, without looking, there was 11 plus Okay, wait a second. 16, 17, 18. 18 plus 7 plus 1 plus 6 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 3 plus 5. Now, I should probably do this again just to be accurate, but I think it's... Let me just do it in my head real quick. 11, 18, 25, 31, 37, 42. Okay, yeah. 62 setups. One of those, only one, was stopped out. And that one, if you recall, when we went over that, it wasn't like in your face stopped out wrong trade it just was at the bottom of a second level trade that went down and barely eked out three points but technically it was kind of a choppy phase and then it shot back up and then came back down and you would have wiggled out of the trade but i just marked it as a stop out that was the only one if you followed the audit carefully and i've got all this recorded so you'll be able to go over it so when I talk about 90% winning trade setups, actually 1 divided by 62, let's see here, I don't know, 63 divided by 1, 
Hmm. One divided by sixty-three. Well, it's so close to a hundred percent. I can't tell you. It, I'm just gonna th guess. Sixty-three setups. Sixty-two winners. And one stopped out. Math-wise, I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. But the point is, that's like 99, 98% winners, whatever, 97 to 99, I don't know. 98% winners on the last two-week audit. That's a fact. You got it on tape. You got it recorded. Oh, thanks, Charlie. 98.4% winners. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you caught all those trades. I mean, there's so many factors involved. There's emotions. There's You're a little bit slow. The market was moving at hyper speed, or else it was going so slow when it just set up all of a sudden. You went, oh, you know, it kind of lulled you to sleep. I, I'm not saying that you're going to catch all this, but the system delivered 98.4%. Uh, percent winning trades in the last two weeks on the mini NASDAQ. If you caught 50% of those, that's a tremendous amount of money. Now let's go to the, the, the fun part. Now again, these are 62 trades. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 62 times, we're just going to do one contract, 62 times $60. Because every trade is three points equals 60 bucks right so 62 times 60 is 37 20 minus $100 because there was one stop out right 36 20 dollar wise per contract over two weeks and 63 setups times I use four dollars and fifty cents as a kind of a normal retail type commission should be a little lower but you might have that maybe a smidgen higher not to worry give the broker a break there uh, 20 283 dollars and fifty cents we're gonna say 284 dollars commission you with me so far? Simple math. $3,620 minus $284 is $3,336. Now, I'm not trying to do this in terms of, gee, wow, look at all the money you could have made. I'm not promoting Boomerang by using these figures. I'm just mechanically doing the math based on a normal natural audit of what this would have produced if you caught every trade and followed the system exactly and all that and very few people are going to be able to do that exactly but by the system offering you that kind of opportunity compared to like just a one that has 50 percent odds or uh, 60 percent which is still very good I'm just showing you if you just learn the method that I just taught you, and you'll have this recording to go over it again, you can go over meticulously every trade that I just did. Now here's where it gets exciting. This is over a two week period. If you a, have a small account with say like six to eight to ten thousand dollars, we're not holding these overnight, so you don't need to hold them, and you're trading just four contracts, what I call a blue collar working trader. A blue collar working trader at four contracts after commission would have made thirteen thousand three hundred and forty four dollars and that's just for two weeks so that's not a bad deal it's a lot of work of course catching all those trades now here's what I'd like you to do this is to keep the regulators off my back <laughs> although they're not on my back you know everybody gets so hyper when you talk about money and it's like oh god give me a break big deal I'm not promising and saying, you know, you can necessarily make that much. I'd like to 
think that you could if you apply yourself. But if you first of all divide that in half, just for fun, you only worked part of the time, you six thousand six hundred seventy seven thousand bucks, and you only worked half the trades. You only took a few. You weren't really meticulously sitting there all day and grinding those out. Still a darn good deal. Seven thousand bucks times a month is fourteen grand. I'm just saying, if you want to become a trader, that's where it all leads to is upping your getting a system like boomerang that really really works i'll get to your questions in a minute by the way I'm just going to finish up the audit and then we'll get the recording locked in that's the net result thirteen thousand three hundred forty four dollars worth of trade signals if you got a fourth of those you got a half you got three fourths of them the idea is that Boomerang gave you a really good chance with 98% winners to step up and make a tremendous uh, career trading the mini NASDAQ only over the last two weeks there, setting that up. So with that in mind, um, thanks very much uh, for watching the audit. I hope you appreciate it. And we got through it right away and it went pretty smooth, so that's good. No technical snafus or anything, which happens sometimes. And uh, we're looking good here. So thanks again for joining with us.